Now I've got a pretty snazzy pattern for you today. And how I came about this one, well, it's not all that interesting. I didn't dig it up from some ancient magazine. Really, I just decided I wanted to tie a dry fly, so I started flipping through the Federation of Fly Fishers Pattern Encyclopedia until I found a pretty cool looking fly. And the one I found, the Brook Trude, really is a pretty cool looking pattern. First off, it's got peacock curl for a body, and while that's not unheard of in a dry fly, it's not all that common. But what really caught my attention was the golden pheasant crest for the tail. And that is not very common at all in a trout fly. Salmon fly tires use it all the time, but that's usually for a wing topping. Now, if you don't have one of these, I would recommend considering picking one up. And not just for the crest feathers, but the, the tippets, the golden tippets. These are used in all kinds of trout flies. And this head is usually about $10, but oftentimes you can pick up a whole skin with a head on it for only $10 or $15. Now this pattern, the Brook Trude, I couldn't find any history on it. In the book, it was tied by Gail Dowdy, who guides on the Gunnison River in Colorado. So it could very well be a fly that he came up with. So if any of y'all out there know Gail, let me know in the comments, or if I can get in touch with him, I'll update the description of the video and tell you how this fly came about. But either way, this is a pretty fun little tie. So there it is in the vise, a Brook Trude. Now, Pattern Encyclopedia only gave one size, set of 14. So I'm gonna tie it on a 14 barbless dry fly hook. I'm sure you could go a little bit bigger or even a little smaller if you wanted. I'm gonna use some black thread. I'll put a base down to about where the barb was or would have been. Now this is what makes this pattern unique. Golden pheasant crest. Some of these fibers from the, the top of the head here. And if you're not used to tying with these, they can be a little tricky. So I got a small one here and I'm going to catch it in on the bottom, trying to keep that downward slant. So it might take me a couple of tries of positioning it, taking it up and trying it again. So we'll see, you know, a couple of loose wraps right there and, and take a look. Is that one going down? It is, it's off a little bit to the side, but I can't help that because I've got the, the jaws to my vise right here. So we'll just, Try our best to, to put that down. Take our thread about midway and let's catch in some wire. Now from what I gather, this is just to give the peacock curl some, some strength to toughen it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go with an extra small. I'm gonna catch this in back to the tail. And again, part my thread up about halfway and catch in, oh, two or three strands of peacock curl right here. Now I'm going to leave my thread about halfway. I'm not going to twist these together. Maybe just try to keep them together a little bit. But with my thread halfway, that should keep them from spreading out. So go ahead and wrap it up. Leave about the first third of the, the hook bare. Now let's counter wrap this rib up through here. Now a couple extra wraps to make sure that's secure. Now we're gonna take a small to medium sized tuft of white calf tail. You know, big enough that we'll give it a significant wing, but small enough that we can stack it. Okay, let's see if that's stacked okay. And I think it did. Now before I catch it in, I'm gonna give my thread a clockwise spin to kind of cord it up a little bit. Let's pick our length right here, about a body length. I think that's gonna work. And I'll catch it in right here with a, a pinch wrap and then another kind of tight wrap. Okay, I like that length right there, but if we're not careful, it's gonna start spinning around the the hook on us. So what I will do, as I do with a lot of hair wings, whether streamers or dry fly, I'm gonna put one wrap under it, but not under the hook, over the, the top right here, and then back under it again. Not always the easiest little maneuver here, but what you effectively do is you get one wrap just around the, the hair the hair wing. So that should keep it on top. Now we can go back with some tighter wraps and it shouldn't be in any danger of spinning around on us. 
So let's cut this off up front as close as you can get it, maybe at a little bit of a taper. Now we'll spend a few wraps just trying to smooth this area out right here. We don't want a big drop down because that'll make it harder to wrap this hackle. Now the recipe in the book says a coachman brown and mix it in with a grizzly dyed orange. So raise your hand if you have a grizzly dyed orange. I can't think of anybody that would really have that. I and mean, maybe a few of you do. And good on you if you do, but I'm not gonna buy some just for the few flies like this that I would tie using it. So I'm just going with the straight Coachman Brown here. And pretty much measured to the size of the hook. It's not a cat skill fly, so I don't want this hackle to be you know, too much bigger than the hook gap. But if you've got that underbody smooth enough, it should help you wrap this hackle. And I want, want it to be pretty heavily hackled. The one I had in the vise at the beginning, I don't think it had enough. So I'm gonna try to get a couple extra wraps on this one right here, maybe, you know, six or seven even. Okay, I think that's enough. Let's catch this off. And I think we left enough room here for a whip finish. Let's try to whip this without trapping any more of these fibers going forward. I'm gonna get one, I can tell. Well, maybe not. Let's snip this and see if we have any cleanup. I'm thinking we're okay. I'm not gonna clean this thing up any. I'm just gonna put a drop of head cement on it and call this guy done. So there you go, Brooke Trude from the Federation of Fly Fishers Pattern Encyclopedia. Pretty cool looking attractor fly. So I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.